Well, konnichiwa, mother factors. My name is Sam Pai. Get it? Because, you know, anyway. And today we're here to talk about one of the most exciting and flashiest cities in the entire world. Norwich. Oh no, wait, that's next week. No, this week we're talking about the neon-soaked zenith of culture that is Tokyo. But why is a cafe in Japan something entirely different to your local greasy spoon? How is a trip on the subway different here than anywhere else in the world? And can I get some kind of free ticket because this has just made me want to go to there? Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered. So pack your bags because we're going on a cosplay-infused mini-break to a packed-out land of all-round fun as we go through 101 facts about Tokyo. Number one. In case you weren't aware, Tokyo is a city, but that's not all. It's a capital city of Japan in this instance. You can find it, if you look carefully enough, in the Kanto region. It's home to over 30% of Japan's total population, with 36 million people over 14,000 square kilometers. Number two. As you can imagine, for what I've just said there, it's the largest and busiest metropolitan in the world, and is spread across three different district or prefectures, Saitama, Chiba, and Kanagawa. These fellas here, the Izu Islands and the Ogasawara Islands, are also part of Tokyo, despite being geographically separated by 620 miles. Number 3. As we've mentioned, Tokyo is made up of three prefectures. These prefectures in turn have special wards, each with different characteristics, which is why Tokyo is known for having a bigger mix of cultures than, um, uh, a yogurt? Number 4. But let's, like the film series of the same name, go back to the past. Oh, that's not it, is it? Tokyo actually used to be known as Edo from when it was first founded in around 3000 BC. It didn't become Tokyo until 1868. Um, spoiler alert there. Number 5. The name Tokyo, by the way, translates to Eastern Capital. Pretty much what it says on the tin, really, isn't it? Number 6. Funnily enough, despite this name, there's no literature or laws that ever made Tokyo the official capital of Japan. It's for this reason that some Kyoto residents, which, by the way, has all the same letters of Tokyo, just mixed up. Weird that. Insist that they live in the capital city. But then again, they didn't put in the paperwork either. So... Number 7. The capital also moved with the emperor of the country to Tokyo. The Imperial Palace is one of the largest tourist attractions in the city, but like Lizzie's old palace, it's mostly closed to the public. Number 8. Only the members of the Imperial Household Agency are allowed to go inside the main grounds. However, if you did want to try your luck, which we don't really recommend if I'm honest, you'll have to swim across a moat and scale a nearly vertical rock wall. Is it really worth it? Number 9. The Imperial House of Japan is actually the oldest continuous monarchy in the world, originating in approximately 600 AD and still reigning to this day, with Emperor Naruhito. That's over one and a half thousand years, and how old I'll feel once this pandemic's over. Number 10. Given its location, you'll not be surprised to learn that the city is no stranger to natural disaster. For instance, in September of 1923, the Great Kanto Earthquake ravaged the city. The centre was burnt to the ground by fires, for which the earthquake was responsible, with 300,000 houses destroyed and over 140,000 people reported missing or dead. Number 11... Tokyo was a target of intense US air raids near the end of World War II, not surprising really considering Pearl Harbor. As a result of this, about 70 unexploded bombs are still found in the capital city every year. Which, you know, adds a bit of a thrill to the commute, I guess. Number 12. In fact, Tokyo was subject to all the most destructive single bombings in history from the Allies. 300 B-29 bombers dropped around 500,000 cylinders of petroleum jelly and napalm. This was, uh, not good, obviously. It resulted in a 40 square kilometer firestorm, which actually killed more than the combined numbers of the Nagasaki and Hiroshima bombings. Number 13. Bearing in mind this happened in 1944, it's kind of amazing that just 18 years later, Tokyo became the first city in the world to reach 10 million residents. Number 14. <laughs> world War II left the iconic Sensoji Temple in ruins. It was rebuilt after the war in the same style as the original. It became a model of new beginnings and a symbol for the Japanese people's resiliency. Number 15. Sensoji Temple is also the oldest temple in Tokyo at more than 1,400 years old. The temple remains solely dedicated to the Buddhist goddess of compassion, Kanon. Number 16. The US bombings of World War II also destroyed Tokyo's collection of cherry blossoms. Obviously not the worst result of that, but still worth mentioning. After the war ended, Washington DC sent cuttings from their cherry blossoms to Japan, which actually came from the Japanese originally. Number 17. Speaking of cherry trees, <laughs> who am I, Katie Tunstall? Nice up-to-date reference there. Sakura season is a special time in Tokyo, as it's when cherry trees bloom in pink and white across the city. This means that spring has arrived. Lovely, isn't it, really? Number 18. Or if you prefer, you can view the blooms at night time, which is known as Yuzakura. 
The Sakura is reflected in the waters of the Meguro and Sumida rivers, accompanied by atmospheric lights or lanterns. This isn't sponsored, by the way, by the tourist board, but it may as well be. Number 19. Tokyo was originally set to host the Summer Olympic Games in 1940, but the privilege ended up being awarded to Helsinki before the Games were cancelled due to World War II. But... Number 20. In 1964, the Summer Olympic Games was held in Tokyo, and they were the first to be held in Asia. Lovely. I, for one, look forward to their next time, which hopefully will go without incident. Number 21. Thing is, they were due to do it again in 2020, but this year is an absolute horror show, so it's been postponed to 2021 because of the old Rona. Because, you know, hopefully it'll all be fixed by then, right? <laughs> please, please. Number 22, ooh. Tokyo will then be the first Asian city to host the Olympic Games twice. Beijing will technically join them in 2022, when they become the first country to host both the Summer and Winter Olympics. But Tokyo will still be the only one to host two summer ones. Number 23. It will also be the largest city to have ever hosted the Games. Due to its exponential growth since 1964, the city's now big enough to take home that title too. Because remember lads, size, very important. Number 24. In March of 1995, Tokyo fell victim to a nerve gas attack on the subway. 13 people died and 6,000 were injured by the packages that leaked nerve agent sarin in five coordinated attacks on three different subway lines. Number 25. The responsible party for this was the domestic terrorist group and doomsday cult Ayum Shinrikyo, who believed the world was on the brink of World War III. The cult went underground shortly afterwards. Number 26. The city holds earthquake drills annually on the anniversary of the 1923 earthquake. It also has open fields maintained to accommodate the people left homeless after real earthquakes. Number 27. Alongside temples, there are 4,000 shrines in Tokyo alone. Japan as a whole is estimated to have over 75,000 temples and 80,000 shrines. That's a lot in case you weren't sure. Number 28. One of the most popular of these shrines is the Shinagawa Shrine, which was built in the 12th century designed to honour the god of food. It's also one of 10 shrines that surround the Tokyo Imperial Palace. Number 29. Japanese culture also counts numerous celebrations, festivals and rituals in Tokyo. It's a New Year tradition to visit shrines, apart from the religious festivals or Matsuris, and portable shrines or Makoshis, which are all observed in the Tokyo calendar. Meanwhile, the viewing of cherry blossoms is most prevalent in April. Number 30. Tokyo's traditional arts reflect its unique culture. Among these are flower arranging or ikebana, folding paper into object forms or origami, woodblock painting, puppet theatre, hot springs as public bathing places, and delicate tea ceremonies. Number 31. There are more than 100 universities and colleges in Tokyo, which is also the highest concentration of universities in the world. I mean, that is a lot. More than 30% of Japan's university students attend school in Tokyo. Number 32. Another huge icon of Tokyo culture is Tsukiji, the wholesale fish market. Why is it so cool? Well, it just so happens to be the busiest and largest fish market in the entire world. Number 33. The main attraction of the market are the live tuna auctions that take place every single morning at Sam. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I read that wrong, 5am. It's also well known as a place for visitors and tourists to go because they're often up due to jet lag. So much so that free tickets are given away at 4am every day. Number 34. Tokyo Skytree is the newest radio tower on the block. It became the tallest structure in Japan in 2010 and reached its full height of 634 meters, or 2,080 feet, in March of 2011, making it the tallest tower in the world, displacing the Canton Tower. Number 35. It also has the highest skywalk in the world, and its name Skytree came from a public vote that won with over 30% of the vote. Not quite Boji McBoatface though, is it? Number 36. The Tokyo Tower is a communications and observation tower in the Shiba Koen district. At 332.9 meters, it's the second tallest structure in Japan. It was originally inspired by the Eiffel Tower, which is why they look so similar. Number 37. Despite the similar appearance though, it's taller than the Eiffel, weighs less than the Eiffel, and has more floors than the Eiffel. Tokyo holds the true Eiffel power. That might be the worst pun I've ever done, please don't go. Number 38. There's also a skyscraper in Tokyo called the NTT Dokomo Yoyogi Building. Why is that special? Well, I'll tell you. Here we go. It changes the colour of the light on the top of the building to tell people if it's going to rain or not and whether they should pack a brolly. God, we need that in London. Number 39. One of the other iconic tall things you can see in the city is Mount Fuji. But for something so iconic, it's pretty elusive. It's only actually visible for around 80 days of the entire year and only when the weather is clear enough. Number 40. 
The district of Hachioji in Tokyo is home to Mount Takeo, the most visited mountain in the world. The mountain rewards its climbers for reaching the summit by hosting them at a mountaintop udon shop and bar. The summit is well known for its natural beauty and thousand mile views. Number 41. Visitors climb the mountain to pay their respects in the temple of Yaku Owen, enjoy a bath in the hot springs, feast on delicious food and beer, and of course, enjoy a hike. But for those who, like me, don't enjoy hiking up a great big mountain, the cable car is here to help. The meaning of life. For such a crowded and heavily built up city, Tokyo boasts a surprising number of beautiful parks. There are over 6,000 different parks and gardens covering more than 2,471 acres within the city. Number 43. 45 of the 51 busiest train stations in the world are in Japan. Tokyo Shinjuku Station is the largest and busiest railway station in the world. On average, 3.7 million passengers pass through the station every single day, or 1.2 billion per year. Number 44. In fact, the city is well known for its insanely busy public transport, with viral videos of the Oshia at work. Oshia, or the pushers, are hired to literally push the millions of passengers aboard the train system during rush hour. Christ, it makes the London commute look tame. Number 45. When they were first brought in at Shinjuku Station, they were called Passenger Arrangement Staff and were largely made up of students working part-time. Number 46. Albeit hectic, the Oshia make the trains run on time, as Tokyo, and Japan in general in fact, are known for their punctuality and efficiency with the train schedule. If trains do fall behind, even by the tiniest amount, staff apologise profusely. You listening there, TFL? Number 47. Train platforms are often lined up with blue lights. These were installed after a study found that blue lights have a soothing effect and ultimately could reduce the amount of people deciding to end their lives by jumping in front of the trains. Wow, that took a turn. Number 48. There are over 800 train stations in the wider Tokyo metropolis area. That's it, that's the fact. Chris, Rasheen, put, just put something cool here to fill the time. I'm so tired. I need to go to bed. Number 49. One more train fact, each station has its own jingle which is played as the train arrives at the platform. Sometimes they can correspond with something iconic from that location, or sometimes companies buy the airways to promote a new movie like Disneyland did for Star Wars. Cool, right? Yeah. Number 50. To prevent flooding, five enormous underground shafts have been built to divert floodwaters without damaging the city. These will also help in the event of a tsunami. Number 51. Built in 2006, the tunnel is about 50 metres below ground, extending 6.3 kilometres in total. It costs $2 billion. Come on, you could have spent that on chicken nuggets. And is the very best of Japan's state-of-the-art civil engineering technology. They're just showing off now. Number 52. It was also used as a hashtag inspo for a level in the video game Mirror's Edge. I mean, here's the two side by side. So, yeah, you can, you can see it, right? Yeah, yeah. Number 53. Shibuya Crossing is said to be the busiest crossing in the world. As many as 2,500 people can be seen crossing the street at the same time. I would hate to drop anything in that crowd. Number 54. The busiest shopping area in Tokyo is Ginza. It served as the country's commercial centre for centuries, standing on the joint where five ancient roads connected Japan's major cities. Number 55. Tokyo to Japan is a bit like what OnlyFans is to me. It's its finance centre. Major finance corporations in Japan have their headquarters in the city, kind of like New York and London, really. The Tokyo Stock Exchange, for example, is located in Kabutocho. Number 56. Tokyo is home to some of the most expensive and acclaimed restaurants in the world, and it was named the world's capital of gastronomy in 2017. Restaurants in Tokyo have acquired more collective Michelin stars than Paris. <laughs> Eat that, Paris. Or rather, don't, because it's so Michelin starred, yeah. Number 57. In Tokyo, 22 sushi restaurants have received Michelin stars. This number came from hundreds of sushi restaurants in the city with diverse price ranges. Number 58. The oldest restaurant in the city is the Komagata Dozu restaurant, which has managed to survive earthquakes and bombings and maintain their business over the very same plot of earth for six generations and over 200 years, first opening its doors in 1801. Number 59. And from the oldest to the priciest, home to the juiciest, fattiest and most expensive Kobe beef or Wagyu beef in the world, the Aragawa restaurant in Shimbashi, Tokyo can cost over $800. Can steak really be worth that much? What's it coated in gold? Number 60. Tokyo has also been named the birthplace of cosplay. The first cosplay cafes appeared in the Akihabara area of Tokyo in the late 1990s. 
A temporary maid cafe was set up at the Tokyo Character Collection event in August of 1998 to promote the video game Welcome to Pier Carrot 2. Yep, that one. Number 61. Since 1998, Tokyo's Akihabara district contained a number of cosplay restaurants, catering to devoted anime and cosplay fans, where the waitresses at such cafes dress in video game or anime character costumes. Tokyo's Harajuku district is the favourite informal gathering place to engage in cosplay in public. Number 62. The Harajuku district in Tokyo is also famed for its street fashion for the teens. Yeah. This culture has been in Japan for more than three decades. The fashion showcases some edgy styles the youth embrace in their dressing in the most recent trends. <laughs> Check me out. Number 63. One of the safest cities to travel in the world as a tourist is, well, Tokyo. I mean, where else did you think that sentence was going? What was I going to say? Norwich. Crimes against tourists in Tokyo are very rare, and the city has one of the lowest crime rates per capita. Nintendo 64. If you want a little sip sip of coffee by the way, avoid Tokyo maybe, because the Starbucks that overlooks the Shibuya Crossing there is one of the busiest in the world. You can also watch a CCTV feed into the store online if you want to, if that's your sort of thing. Number 65. Capsule hotels are very popular in Tokyo. A capsule hotel by the way is something that features a large number of extremely small rooms, if you can call them that, intended to provide cheap basic overnight accommodation for guests who do not require the services offered by more conventional hotels. These captures can also sometimes include TVs and Wi-Fi, so it really does have literally everything one would need. Number 66. Even though many of the hotels were made famous by the capital, the first capsule hotel in the world opened in 1979, and was the Capsule in Osaka, located in the Umeda district of Osaka, Japan. Which isn't Tokyo, but I just thought you'd like to know that anyway. Number 67. From one end of the scale to the other though, Tokyo's Ritz Carlton is home to one of the most expensive suites in the world, and I'm not just talking about a uh, curly whirly. Rooms can go over $7,000 a night, but the most expensive, designed by Frank Nicholson, cost $18,000 a night. Also known as a lot of chicken nuggets, that's right. Number 68. The Hen Na Hotel is operated by robots, and in the reception, visitors are greeted by a dinosaur robot. What, I mean, get me here, please. There are actually several hotel branches within the same company. The one in Ginza is certified as the first hotel with working robots in the world. Number 69. Please remember to tip your robot. In Shinjuku, one can also visit the famous robot restaurant, where you can enjoy a robotic show. Okay, it's not really so much of a restaurant in the traditional sense, but they do serve bento boxes and snacks during the show. Give my dad. Wookie, wookie, wookie. Number 70. Much like seemingly anywhere worth their salt, Tokyo has its very own Disneyland. In fact, Tokyo's Disneyland is the first Disneyland built outside the USA and the very first in Asia. It employs over 20,000 people too. Number 71. Tourists can also take advantage of tax-free shopping, which is available to foreign tourists at licensed stores when making purchases of over 5,000 yen. Number 72. Okay, I miss talking about crazy cafes, let's talk more about those. In Tokyo, you can find cafes that have such themes as vampires, Totoro, Moomins, and Pom Pom Purin. Many of Tokyo's themed cafes are limited editions and so-called pop-up stores that only exist for a certain period. Number 73. Some of the more popular of these cafes include Pikachu-themed, Pokemon-themed, Sailor Moon-themed, and so, so many more. Some of these more popular ones have remained as permanent establishments. Maybe we should start a one of facts cafe. Number 74. Cat cafes are actually very popular in the capital as residents live in tiny apartments that often hardly provide them with any space, let alone a pet. So these people tend to go through their days without any animals to enrich their lives, like I do. There are lots of other cafes with other tame animals like dogs, mini pigs, hedgehogs, owls, bunnies, burps, and even a capybara. Number 75. And we can't talk about Tokyo's crazy cafes without mentioning one of the most famous, the Kawaii Monster Cafe. It's genuinely like neon lights meet cute Japanese monsters, but on acid. Don't do acid. It's a psychedelic mishmash of crazy foods, trippy zones, and all this takes place inside the stomach of Mr. 10,000 Chopsticks. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Number 76. The four zones inside here are Sweets Go Round, the Mushroom Disco, the Milk Stand, and the Mel Tea Room, which then lead to the final area, Bar Experiment, which is literally inside the tentacles of a neon glowing jellyfish. Okay, not literally. Basically, it's insane and unique, and you should go if you're visiting the city. Number 77. There's a cafe in Tokyo that only hires men as staff. It's called the Big Boy Cafe. I'm kidding, no it's not. It's called the Butler's Cafe. The owner started the cafe because they thought that Japanese women wanted their waiters nice, good-looking, and western. Number 78. 
Tokyo is the city to go to for a real-life Mario Kart experience. Here you can drive through busy Shibuya and other parts of the city, dressed up as your favourite character while driving a go-kart. Number 79. Yeah, what I just said isn't technically correct, because you can't do that anymore. In 2017, Nintendo sued Marikar for intellectual property infringement, eventually forcing the go-kart company to pay 50 million yen. That's worse than it sounds, it was $475,000, but still that's a lot. Number 80. Here's the thing though, tourism in Japan fell by 99.9% .9 in April, all thanks to Miss Rona. So street carts struggled to pay for this lawsuit and, you know, everything really. So they started a crowdfunding campaign named Save the Street Cart on the Japanese fundraising website Campfire. It ended on June the 30th and it reached 11,569 yen of its 2 million yen goal. Number 81. Tokyo has more neon lights than any other city in the world. I mean, mate, that makes sense really, doesn't it? The weekend must love it there. Number 82. Vending machines are everywhere. Japan's national tourism organizations say there are 5.52 million vending machines in the country, totaling $62 billion. Number 83. Believe it or not, around 3% of Japan's total power budget goes towards these vending machines. Statistics also claim that you'll find a vending machine in Tokyo every 12 meters. In fact, there's one vending machine per every 23 people living in the city. Number 84. In these vending machines, you can buy pretty much anything you can think of. The standards like candy and drinks, but also hamburgers, clothes, ice cream, and milk packs. Mmm, milk packs. Number 85. As of December 2019, around 9.4 thousand pachinko parlors were operating in Japan, which means a buttload of them are in Tokyo. Gambling is technically illegal in Japan, but there is a cheeky loophole that allows people to play the game with the tiny balls. Not that one. Pachinko. Number 86. Tokyo is also the city with the highest marriage rate in Japan. What makes it even better is that most of the married couples stay together too. Ah, oh, how rare. While Tokyo only ranks 8th in the country's highest divorce rate, Okinawa has the most marriages ending in divorce. Number 87. Godzilla is one of the most recognisable mascots from Japan and he's known for destroying the capital, you know, while trying to save people, but still, he does destroy it. But he's put his city-destroying ways behind him, or her, sorry, and settled down with a job as a tourism ambassador of Shinjuku. Number 88. There are three different ways to explain why the district of Ikebukuro has the name that it does. Honestly, no one really has any firm idea. It sort of translates to pond bag, so, hmm. Number 89. The Ryogoku district is known for its fat men. This is actually because the district is home to the Ryogoku Sumo Hall, as well as many other sumo academies. This is an honour because sumo wrestlers are highly respected in Japanese culture. Number 90. Official sumo wrestling tournaments are held six times a year, three of which are held in the Ryogoku Sumo Hall in, well, you, I've just mentioned it, Tokyo. Each tournament is held over 15 days, so you can get a whopping 45 days of sumo fun in Tokyo per year. Number 91. In 2010, Tokyo officials almost celebrated the triumph of a man who allegedly reached his 111th birthday. However, when they got there, they found the remains of the man in his bed. Turns out he died 30 years previously, but the family continued to collect his pension money. Number 92. In a fact that would make Dwight Schrute cry with happiness, Tokyo is also home to Itoya. It's true. The largest paper store in the entire world. Opening in 1904, it's over 100 years old and is basically the stationary version of IKEA. Number 93. Almost every street in Tokyo apparently has a haunted house. However, the experts say that the best ghost hunting spot in Tokyo is the coal mine tunnel in Hachioji. Stories of a girl in a red dress and frequent traffic accidents have sent urban legend fiends mad. Number 94. Speaking of things that are spooky, there's apparently a haunted skyscraper in Tokyo. Sunshine 60 was built on the site of the Sugamo prison, which was, well, a uh, prison. Modern folklore dictates that it's haunted by the people who died in said prison. Ooh. Number 95. On May the 5th, 2011, Tokyo's Shia Dome Nihon TV Studios recorded one of the greatest human feats of all time, when 21 members of the Kales Dance School squeezed into a Mini Cooper. This set the world record for the most people inside a Mini Cooper. I don't know why either. Number 96. Tokyo is home to more than 279,000 millionaires. Yep, millionaires we can but dream. That's more than any city in Asia and third in the entire world behind London and New York and just beating out Hong Kong. Number 97. The Tokyo Marathon is one of the major marathons in the world alongside London, Berlin, Boston, Chicago and New York. It was the last city to join the World Marathon Majors in 2013. Number 98. 
Researchers at the University of Tokyo have created a robot hand that has a 100% winning rate playing rock, paper, scissors. Using a high-speed camera, the robot recognizes within one millisecond which shape the human hand is making and then produces the corresponding winning shape. I mean, is that cheating? It feels like cheating. Number 99. Something else super cool is the research project of Kanagawa Institute of Technology's Takeo Watanabe and 70-year-old swordsmith Genra Kuro Matsunaga, who are working together to create a device strong and sharp enough to collect samples from asteroids. Number 100. They've used traditional swordsmithing techniques and materials such as Tanahagen in order to give their rock core a thing enough sharpness and plasticity to not only work in space, but pierce asteroids that are millions of years old. A number of movies have been shot in Tokyo, including The Wolverine, Lost in Translation, Kill Bill Vol. 1, Heart of Inception, Furious 7, and Tokyo Drift, clues in the name, among many, many others, and many more to come. So that was 101 Facts About Tokyo. Is it your favourite city in the world? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to 101 Facts if you haven't done so already, because, ah, oh, I mean, we're all a big, lovely family here. In the meantime, or moon time if you live on the moon, why not give one of these videos here a watch? You're really going to enjoy it, I promise, I promise you, you are. I'll see you there. Bye-bye now.